Now, even the most confident of directors can't be entirely sure of how audiences will react to their movie until it's actually been screened. As a result, the test screening process is a majorly important part of big budget filmmaking, giving both the director and the studio an opportunity to figure out what works and what doesn't. Of course, it goes without saying that test audiences and studio executives have been responsible for making egregious and rather cynical changes to countless movies for the worse, but there are also times where their judgment proves totally shrewd. But regardless of whether it was a good or bad call, these 10 sci-fi movie endings all ended up getting cleaved away and replaced because somebody down the line, either a test audience, producer or studio head, thought they didn't work. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 sci-fi movie endings you can no longer see. Number 10. Will Dies – Rise of the Planet of the Apes Rise of the Planet of the Apes concludes memorably with the ape leader Caesar bidding his human companion Will an emotional farewell and disappearing into the forest. But the originally filmed ending was considerably more dramatic, with Will attempting to protect Caesar from the owner of the primate shelter John, and getting fatally shot as a result. This then led to the apes massacring the armed humans who pursued them into the forest. Yet producer Dylan Clark felt that this scene was idiotic even when it was being filmed. He said, We were shooting and I remember saying, you know what, this is just gonna be a bummer. People are gonna be like, oh, it was a dumb scene is the truth. We had Brian Cox coming out of nowhere and shooting James Franco. The scene dramatically was idiotic. And worse, it just made you feel bad. It was just like, oh my god, this is the worst movie ever. And so, just a month before the film was due to release, the decision was made to reshoot the ending, and given how much disdain Clark clearly had for that original ending, it's sadly unlikely that it'll ever be screened outside of those who worked on it. Number 9. Jin and Cassian run across Scarif's Beach – Rogue One – A Star Wars Story Now, it's no secret that Rogue One was massively overhauled during post-production, with Disney splashing out on five weeks' worth of reshoots in order to fix major sequences in the movie, especially in its third act. As a result, numerous scenes from the trailers ended up up not appearing in the final film, including a thrilling-looking climax in which Jin and Cassian sprint across a Scarif beach whilst being fired upon by AT-ATs. Ultimately, director Gareth Edwards confirmed that the ending was retooled primarily for pacing reasons. Originally, Jin and Cassian had to run across the beach in order to reach the communications tower where they could transmit the Death Star plans to the rebels, but to compress the finale, the tower was moved into the Empire's main base, negating the need for the mad dash. In Edwards' own words, he said, In cutting the film, it just felt too long. We had to find ways to compress the third act, which was quite long as it was. And one real, fast, brutal solution was to put the tower in the base, so they don't have to run across the beach and do all of that stuff to get there. That became a decision that eliminated the shots you see in the trailer of the backs of Cassian and Jin. While Edwards' rationale seems reasonable, it's a shame that the more elongated alternate ending has never been shown outside of the Lucasfilm brain trust, because, let's face it, it looked terrific. Number 8. Ava's Point of View Reveal – Ex Machina Alex Garland's terrific sci-fi thriller Ex Machina almost wrapped up with an even more provocative ending. In the final cut of the movie, android Ava escapes Nathan's secure facility, leaves poor Caleb trapped inside, and rides a helicopter to civilization where she's able to effortlessly blend in. The original cut offered a slight tweak on this grim finale, though, by presenting greater insight into precisely how Ava views the world. When Ava speaks with the helicopter pilot before boarding, we briefly see the events from Ava's perspective, revealing that she interprets the pilot's words as nothing more than sounds and pulses. Basically, Ava wasn't approximating traditional human interaction nearly as close as Nathan and Caleb and we, the audience, actually assumed. Her interpretation of the world around her was totally abstract and unique, and whether that qualifies as consciousness or not is left for the viewer to decide. Garland has never confirmed why the ending was changed, though Oscar Isaac theorized that maybe it just didn't work in the cut. Either way, it's clearly something that fans would love to see one day. Number 7. The Autobots and Decepticons Make a Truce – Transformers Dark of the Moon The original ending for Transformers Dark of the Moon actually remains in the movie's novelization, where Decepticon leader Megatron makes a truce with the Autobots and heads back to Cybertron in defeat. This ending would have brought the Transformers trilogy to a clear conclusion, yet somewhere along the line, the decision was made to reshoot the ending to be more open-ended. In the final movie, Megatron Megatron offers only a hollow truce with Optimus Prime, who soundly rejects it, before decapitating him and executing Sentinel Prime for good measure. As for the remaining Decepticons, it's assumed that they'll be back for the next movie. Ever since the film's release, rumors have suggested that Bay changed the ending after the novelization.
stabilization was leaked online ahead of release. But it's just as likely that Bay simply felt that the film needed a punchier, cooler ending during post-production. Number six, John Connor dies, becomes a Terminator. Terminator Salvation. When Terminator Salvation director MCG was recently asked if there was anything he wished he could have done differently with the movie, he offered up a simple response. I would have stuck with the dark ending that we photographed that got cut. Now, MCG is referring to the film's stunning original ending, which would have seen John Connor die after being mortally wounded in the climax. But human Terminator hybrid Marcus then volunteers to have John's skin fitted over his own body, effectively allowing John Connor to live on as a mythic, hopeful figure for humanity despite his actual death. The dramatic irony of Connor becoming a Terminator well, it speaks for itself. Yet this ending ultimately received pushback from both test audiences and the studio, with the latter feeling it was way too dark. And so, a new ending was shot in which Connor survives his grim injuries after Marcus offers up his own heart for a transplant, making the ultimate sacrifice for the cause. Not a bad ending in of itself, but not nearly as interesting as what was originally planned, nor a scripted yet unfilmed version where the Terminator John Connor gets taken over by Skynet and murders all the key members of the human resistance. Number 5. The Cure's Success is unknown. The Invasion 2007's The Invasion isn't a particularly good movie, but it almost had a much more interesting ending. While the 1956 Invasion of the Body Snatchers ended hopefully and the 1978 remake opted for a considerably bleaker finale, the 2007 version originally intended to split the difference and end on a more ambiguous note. The initially shot ending left it uncertain whether Dr. Carol Bennell's immune son Oliver survived the attack in the film's climax, leaving it up in the air as to whether his immunity could be used to cure the alien virus that was afflicting humanity. Test audiences unsurprisingly turned their noses up at this, which combined with Warner Brothers' general dissatisfaction with the movie prompted a round of reshoots to the tune of $10 million, written by the Wachowskis and directed by V for Vendetta's James McTeague. The new ending included an epilogue which categorically confirmed that Oliver had survived and his immunity had allowed the creation of a vaccine which wiped out the infection. Now, While it's easy to see what the studio were going for here, the original ending sounded way more bold. The reshoots clearly were not worth the money and the hassle. Number 4. Kate Finds the Aliens – The Thing 2011 It's not much of a secret that 2011's The Thing prequel was significantly reworked during post-production, with the studio ultimately mandating that the extensive practical effects be effectively painted over with CGI. Smart move. Now, Much of the third act was also reshot, with the director revealing that the film's original ending had protagonist Kate entering the alien spacecraft and discovering the bodies of the original alien pilots, which had been killed by The Thing. This ending would have have implied that the aliens attempted to crash the ship in order to kill the thing, which they had collected from another planet before it managed to escape confinement aboard their spacecraft. The thing then assimilated one of the aliens in an attempt to fly the ship away from Earth. But ultimately, following test screenings, it was decided that this ending had got too much going on, and so it was ultimately reshot to remove the aliens entirely, replacing them instead with an animatronic pilot with a glowing hologram. Number 3. Spock Dies For Real Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan famously ends with Spock sacrificing himself to save Captain Kirk, though the film nevertheless hinted at his possible resurrection. Moments prior to his demise, Spock performs a mind meld on Bones and cryptically tells him to remember, in actual fact transferring his spirit or Orcatra into Bones, before we see Spock's casket land on the newly formed Genesis planet. Yet both of these moments were late stage additions after The Wrath of Khan's original conclusion went down like a lead balloon with test audiences. In Nicholas Meyer's first cut of the movie, Spock simply died in unsentimental fashion without any hint whatsoever that he could be brought back to life. Executive producer Harvey Bennett later went on to say that test audiences reacted with a funeral silence, and so despite Meyer's objections, a more hopeful ending was cooked up with a few snappy reshoots. This led to Spock returning for all subsequent movies featuring the original series cast. While there isn't a night and day difference between the two endings, it's clear that the tone of Meyer's original cut would have been considerably more downcast compared to what we ended up with. Number 2. Jean Grey Battles a Skrull Armada in Space – Dark Phoenix The final major movie in Fox's X-Men universe was put through the post-production mangle, with a large portion of the third act ultimately being reshot. Now, Originally, Dark Phoenix saw the X-Men battling the Skrulls rather than the lesser-known Dabari, and the movie concluded with an epic space battle in which Jean Grey reached her final Phoenix 
form before obliterating a Skrull armada. And as for antagonist Vuck, well she would have faced off against Jean Grey, Cyclops and Professor X in a more intimate fight set at the United Nations. However, this ending was scrapped in favour of a climactic set piece that takes place primarily on a bloody train. As for the original ending that was nixed, well James McAvoy suggested it was because the filmmakers realised that it had excessive similarities to a recently released superhero movie, believed to be either Captain Marvel with its space set final battle or Captain America Civil War, which similarly had a more low-key fight. Even so, it sounds way more interesting than the relatively tepid ending that we got. And number one, the roaches infiltrate humanity, Mimic. Now, Mimic is far from director Gilmo del Toro's finest work, though the production was marred by the constant meddling of producer Bob Weinstein, who felt that the film wasn't scary enough and even tried to get del Toro fired during shooting. Del Toro, for his part, called it one of the worst experiences of his life. Okay then, good. The director's original ending, though, was considered way more provocative than the one that was actually released. You see, Dr. Susan Tyler and Dr. Peter Mann still meet up at the Grand Central Station, but hear the sound of cockroaches around them, implying that the man-sized Judas breed cockroaches have managed to successfully infiltrate humanity. But test audiences reportedly hated this ending, and so a new, happier ending was shot, which categorically saw the Judas breed wiped out and humanity prevail. Though a grotty video clip of the original ending was posted online back in 2011, it sadly disappeared off the internet since, seemingly without a trace. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 sci-fi movie endings you can no longer see. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or we can swing by Instagram where it's the same handle, RetroJ, but the O is a zero. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.